What you are about to see are real paranormal investigations from Calhoun County Paranormal Investigators. They are raw and uncut. Some material and situations may not be suitable for some audiences. Maybe in the right lighting we could catch some ghosts. Maybe even with see my own grandfather. So, uh, now that I found his grave and paid my respects, uh, let's go have a little fun. <laughs> okay, uh... Holy crap. What? I swear I just saw something, I'm not kidding. I swear the a Oh my gosh, that was so freaky. It was like some person walking right here. Yeah, uh, the thing is though, what sucks is my night vision doesn't go nearly as far. All I see is pitch black. Oh my gosh. It's freaking oh. me out, huh? Holy crap, that was so scary. Uh, there could be possibility of ghosts. Maybe a big cat. There'd be cats walking around out here. Whatever, we've come to do our documentary and we're not going to leave until we're done. And I know with my buddy Gert right next to me, I have nothing to worry about. We're Ghostbusters. Heck yeah, man. We're always looking for the better deal. It was right, right in front of this grave right here. Alright. Let's see what it says. My name is Jesse Olney. I'm the co-founder of Callum County Paranormal Investigators. In October of 2001, I became a full-fledged believer of the paranormal. It was on that night, I was with some friends and my brother as well. We were walking through a cemetery lawn and I saw a full apparition of a little girl running from one side of the cemetery to the next. It was at that time she turned and she looked at me and where her eyes were, were black holes. After that experience, uh, I could not deny the fact that I wanted answers for what I saw that night. That night that Jesse seen the apparition in Palmer Cemetery, that, that 
set my interest into the paranormal through the roof. I didn't experience anything. I didn't get to see anything either. But it made me want to start opening books, getting on the internet. I started researching everything I could find on the paranormal. And we, what we did was we would just start going back to that same graveyard every once in a while just to see if we could catch what Jesse's seen. And one night, about a year later, I finally seen my first apparition in that place. It was some figure floating above a grave. And that instantly changed me. And I was like, yep, this does exist. And I was never one to ever believe that that stuff existed. So myself and, and some friends, including my brother, set out on a journey to, to see what exactly happens after we pass on and what exactly causes paranormal activity. As we went into high school, we were the Ghostbusters. Uh, we got made fun of, we got told that we were crazy, uh, but we also sparked a lot of interest in other people to check out uh, places around that had uh, rumors of hauntings. I remember raising my hand and talking to teachers during class and asking them different uh, histories of, of different locations that we had heard were haunted, just so we could find out as much information about the destination as possible so we could go there and investigate it to see if there's anything haunted there. As I went into college, I uh, found some others that were interested in the paranormal and they helped me uh, do research and find more places in the area that I went to college. And through that, I began to think that we should start a group. So I talked to Jesse and we got together the idea to start a group uh, back home and we called it Calhoun County Paranormal Investigators. We created CCPI for one reason and one reason only, and that was to answer the question of do ghosts really exist? And if they do, what causes them to be there? And you know, what allows them to talk to us and move things? And, and why do you see an apparition? And, and uh, where do these voices out of nowhere come from? And what causes them? And what creates the energy that allows the paranormal entities to do that? And we started small and just going to small locations. Ghost hunting wasn't big back then. A lot of people didn't let you go into locations and check out their place for ghosts. That just wasn't the norm. We started ghost hunting before ghost hunting was the thing to do. Um, ghost hunters hit the air probably uh, three years, four years after we started doing this. And uh, so, you know, we're not just part of the fad for people who decided to start ghost hunting because of a TV show. We did this because we have a passion for it, and that passion isn't dying away anytime soon. If you were to come to me and ask me, when am I going to stop ghost hunting, I don't have an answer for you because I don't ever plan on stopping. In our time in CCPI, we have visited many locations across the state of Iowa. And it's funny, as I watch paranormal shows and stuff on TV, you really don't see Iowa uh, being featured on these shows, places being visited. I mean, there's the Velisca House, of course, but other than that, really nothing. So Iowa doesn't really get much of a rep for uh, being a haunted state. But uh, we know, on the other hand, that it is, and there's a lot of places to offer. So last year, we decided it was time to document this and show it to the world that Iowa has many, many amazing haunted locations to offer. So we set out on our journey, and that is haunted Iowa. It's been an amazing journey. We've been to some phenomenal locations and we've experienced things that have changed all our lives in a way that uh, they never were changing before. We've experienced things that we never thought we would. We've had people run away screaming. We've had people crying. I mean, it's it's not what we expected, but you know, it's, it's what comes with the territory when you're dealing with something that's unknown. You never know what to expect. Seth and Jesse spent over nine months visiting and investigating locations along with their team to document Iowa's most haunted places. The first investigation on CCPI's journey took place on a cool September night. Every journey starts somewhere, and CCPI started at the American Theater in Cherokee, Iowa. Although the theater was a very interesting location, with good claims, it unfortunately didn't give the team a lot of action. But in the midst of a slower night, there was a diamond in the rough. The following segment was caught around 1 a.m. Alright, I left a little green light up at the top of the stairs by the projection room. There you go. 
if the projector master wants to run up there and say something or start rolling a movie, uh, you're more than welcome. Right after Dan says his request for the projection master, the following footage is caught on the DVR camera that is shooting towards the projection room. If you look closely, it appears a person is walking into the projection room while swinging their arm. Does a projectionist from the past listen to Dan's request after he says the following? If the projector master wants to run up there and say something or start rolling a movie, even though the theater didn't give the team much action, they were able to walk away with some of their best evidence to date. Oh, oh my. Business. Oh, oh my. <laughs> okay, uh, so we got Melissa locked down, so we're all good for that. Just uh, got the email saying that we got the spot. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any ideas for what you want to do. I know Seth and I talked about uh, doing like a reenactment, and what we'll do is like I'll play JB, and then you can be Sarah. So we'll sleep in their bed. We'll sleep in their bed, and then uh, um, if DJ ends up coming. Then we will have four you, you and Cole, and Gert, and then DJ. You guys will play the kids. Okay. And then what we'll have is Johnny will be the axe murderer. Of course. And um, okay. so then we're gonna we'll bring the axe in the house and like shoot the whole. Yeah. Like I want to try to get the real Let's deal the axe. Real axe. Yeah. yeah. The one they used on that other show yeah, <laughs> yeah but. since we're filming right now <laughs> um, and then we'd also talked about doing like a like a live feed of the investigation like a questionnaire and then in between like on a break the and then uh, I, I just know that I want to make sure that we push this house this time yeah definitely I mean the first I've only been there once and it was with a huge group so Balls I want to have yeah. some legit experiences well there. and if and if this is really the last time that we're going to investigate Velisca we need to go all out. Like, we need to investigate this place like we never investigated it before. And that's why we're hoping that the reenactment idea will, you know, if Johnny's okay with it. Um, I'll actually we'll call Hauser in the next week and just make sure he's yeah, good with it. Yeah, just make sure it's okay, you know. Because, I mean, I know he wants to investigate with us and make sure he's comfortable with it. Because I think that'll really fire things yeah. up. Uh, like, yeah. really fire things up. So, I mean, if we're looking for one thing to put the nail in the coffin to blow that place up, that's, I think, that can do it. As the team began planning their last stop on their journey, we'll take a step back to the fall of 2010 for an investigation that proved to be much less disappointing than the first. The Grand Opera House, built in 1889, is one of the most majestic and beautiful buildings in downtown Dubuque. The overall size and presence of the building gives it a character all its own. All five stories in the large auditorium exude a rich history of stage actors and their many shows that were put on. This rich history hasn't left the building yet either, as many reports of actors and actresses from the past are seen and heard still, living out their dreams on the stage. CCPI could not wait to get their hands on this place because many of the team had been eyeing this location for years prior. EVP number two, Cole and I are going to be 
downstairs, going through dressing rooms, the hallway, all that good jazz. Alright. So we just walk into the hallway or what are we doing? Yep. Okay. We use the viewfinder, it'll be easier. I see security. Huh? And I cannot see anything in front of my face. Okay, well uh We'd like to communicate with you if anyone's down here. Uh, easy way to do that is to either come to this green light right here, touch it, feel it. That'll tell us that you're here. Another way is to talk into this red light over here, which then we can pick up your voice. So come on over here. Uh, we don't mean any harm. We just want to document your presence. You're fine, there. I not have fat people back in the day. Obviously not. <laughs> like almost elbow to elbow. No, I bet they sang opera. I bet they did. Huh? Fat people? Yeah, the opera. I feel like I'm just gonna run into something. Let me go up here. Right? Hold on, it's I have no idea where I'm going. From there, because they weren't really muffled. They were, they were like clear voices. Sure, wasn't Dave being? It was female, dude. What? Yeah. I'm gonna stay out here. You go in there and Where? keep asking in here. Okay. Keep asking questions like uh, that you were before. I just heard something over here. So you moving over there? Mark that EVP. I'm getting that feeling, that Velisca feeling a little bit. It's not as intense, but I'm getting a little bit. Did you want me to come back over here? Were you afraid I was going to leave? I thought I heard a little voice down here. Can you come closer to talk to us? I'm having a little trouble hearing you. I think what it is. What? Right before the radio call, Seth and Dave were on the balcony in the auditorium. While up there, they both witnessed a woman standing on the stage in this location wearing a long dress. What was that we didn't hear you? Pretty sure Dave and I just witnessed a freaking born apparition. What the freak? Oh. 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 Sorry. Did you just feel that? <coughs> yeah. But no, we seen uh, oh. what looked like oh, a dress, like a glowing dress. Oh. Standing in the middle oh, of the wow. stage. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was like this glow. Whoa! Whoa! We just peeked it's out. That's the radio scene. Oh, okay. Uh, we totally just got chills when you were saying that. Yeah, dude, I'm not kidding. It was just like, dude, just like a gust right of wind, dude. Yeah. Dude, it's seriously like a gust of wind just went down this hallway when you said that. <laughs>
Was this gust of wind the woman from the stage rushing to the dressing room for a wardrobe change? I thought I seen a shadow in there. Did okay. you just hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so I came up I came up here, okay? Hold on. Cole, did you just hear that? I totally heard a male breath. Right here. It's very cold. Wow. It is very cold right here. Feel it. It's like all around me. Dude, it got a lot colder down here. Didn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I came back here, you know. Did you, did that was that? me. Okay. So I came back here, okay, and I I glanced, and a black shadow jet. You know where that stand is, or that that stand with wheel things yeah. right there? It jet right to the left of that. From the right to the left, like from the from, right to the left, from yeah. the room I was in to the stairway. It 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 started like right there. All right. It, it was like a one second okay. type deal. Dude, you know where that stairway leads up to? Where? The stage. Really? And that happened before uh, Seth and Dave seen the apparition. That might have came from down here up to that stage. It could have been. And then it might have ran back down here. Yeah. You know, doing a quick dress change? Dude, that's totally this possible, is, this, you know? this was all dressing room, you know? Yeah. Later, while in the basement dressing room, Seth and Dave capture the following on their audio recorder. How about a knock? How about a knock like this? Was that you? Oh, no. Oh. My gosh. Dude. I got chills. The knock response came from inside one of the closed dressing rooms. Was this an actor or an actress from the past responding to Seth's request? And she, the light just stayed on, and we're like, what did you see? I've seen two red eyes. Two red dots, at least. That should have been on camera, too. Right up here. You got some red eyes for us oh. again? Who's here with us? Killed. Killed. Cole is using the ghost radar app on his phone. Although we don't believe it to be a reliable investigation tool, we still like to experiment with it. Killed. What? Killed. Did someone kill you or did you kill someone? Is there someone knocking in here? Can you knock again for us? Can you knock like this? Knock really loud for us, like this. I'm looking at you. Whoa, something just flew out of your eye, dude. Something just flew oh, out of your I'm head. I'm feeling a big the last. time. This anomaly cannot be dust because it manifests on screen. It also helps validate the overwhelming presence Jesse was feeling. Stay there. Thanks, fine. Buddy. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Whoa, buddy. Whoa, buddy. Whoa, buddy. Yeah, dude, totally. I got it on camera, too. Something flew out oh, of your dude. head. You okay? Yeah. Just get the mini TV. It's on over on the table, dude. Are you here with us right now? Is that all you got? You just been waiting for me to come downstairs? I uh, you need to give a lot more than that.
did some action. Something just crept up on Jazz. I want you to take all my energy and use it to make a big noise. You understand me? Take out three of us. That should be plenty. Touch one of us. Do something. Dad, you said kill them before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so kill Were you killed down here? Did somebody hurt you? I just saw it move again. I did too. Holy cow, do you feel that, dude? Whoa, oh my, oh. dude. Whoa. You need to make a noise. It has been too cool, dude. I feel Show yourself. Oh. Oh my god. Come on! Well, you need to show yourself at the end of this hallway that you had. Oh yeah, dunk boys. Dude, it is freezing ooh, ooh, down here. Ooh, ooh. Do you feel that? Dude, something's like touching my hand. Are you serious? Dude, there's like a, at least a 10 degree temperature difference down here. Come on! Where Shove you? us! Touch us, do something! Did somebody just drag your grass to the wall? Okay. okay. We want to know that you're here. Come on, show yourself. There's a mirror right here. Where, at, where are you feeling it, Gert? Straight ahead? Yeah, right in here. Yeah. Oh my, it's cold. I know, you feeling it? Whoa. You in here? Dude, I just had a cold breeze. You alright? Right yeah, we all did, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's effing cold. And this is where. Is there more than one person There's down here? There's a disco here? ball. Oh jeez, I've walked in all this stuff. I mean, you can take it away, you can see. You're probably blind now, but... No, I'm good. Who's in here with us? Ouch! Gosh dang us, it. You want to communicate with us, come up to this screen. I'm going to show you what we're looking at right now. our view yeah just a little bit of red light that's all we have come up to this green light did you see that what was that them what I thought I heard a female by the stairs did it hey Erica did you just talk no, no. You just heard a female. Over by the stairs. Dude, I can't. Oh, frick, dude. It's clear it is. Dude, I think it is such a temperature difference. Dude, it's effing. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, oh my. Dude, it came in here when you came in here. Is it really? Oh, wow. Towards the end of the night, the team gathered on the balcony in the auditorium. Just when the team thought the activity was done for the night, 
Dan witnessed an apparition of a man walk across the stage. The Grand Opera House lived up to its reputation and provided great activity for CCPI. The team quickly learned the actors and actresses from the Opera House's past still inhabit the great building. Was that you? Oh. Yep. Hauser man, what's up brother? Um, driving to a baby. Um, okay, also the idea, we'll go to change the subject. The idea that I was taught, or I mentioned on your Facebook, that we had some sweet idea for the investigation, uh -huh. um, is we have eight people coming along and uh, and then have you, and we were thinking sometime in the night laying, like everybody laying somehow on one of the beds and kind of like totally reenacting it all. And then have you sit in the attic, dude, and like smoke a cigarette and freaking, just freaking totally reenact the whole thing. Well, you know, it's I'm funny how many times that actually crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we'll have evidence of what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully, somebody will go over the recording. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I thought, hey, why not? Let's try it. Worth, worth yeah. the risk. That's never, ever been done. So. I thought it'd be pretty sweet, man. Yeah. Might yeah. might kick up a little something and kinda weird it out. Yeah, I think if anything that would kick up something. <laughs> and we thought we could like talk about it beforehand. And so we just enter in the house and not mention that we're acting this out or anything, like treat it so freaking real. Yeah. And just have you go in there before all of us and just totally play with it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly what we were talking about. So we just wanted to see if you were down because I thought that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm always down to like up eleven at that point. Freaking right, dude. With all plans falling into place for the final investigation, the team was very intrigued to see if the Velisca investigation would beat out the previous stop in the little town of Farrar. Farrar School, built in 1921, sits in the small town of Farrar, Iowa. The school held classes for over 80 years and finally in 2002 the doors closed, locking the long history of the schoolhouse inside forever. The school sits across the street from a 150 year old cemetery. Some believe the spirits from this cemetery inhabit and haunt the school. Others believe it is the kids who used to play on this very playground and the faculty who taught them their daily lessons who make up for the hauntings. Standing in front of the school, one can instantly feel the ominous presence of the building. Stepping through the door and ascending to the school's hallways feels like you just stepped back in time. Old school papers and library cards still fill the lockers. Desks and chalkboards still sit in classrooms. And teachers' names still hang above classroom doors. With the paranormal claims, it feels as though the school is still in session. Doors slam by unseen forces. Balls roll by themselves in the gym. 
Lockers open and close by themselves. Dark figures are seen throughout the school. The feeling of being watched is almost guaranteed, and the echoes of former students can still be heard in the hallways and classrooms. Right away when CCPI arrived at the school, they began to feel as though they were being watched and that they were in trouble. They felt as though they had to be sent to the principal's office. With this feeling, CCPI wasn't sure what to expect, but what they would find in that old schoolhouse that night would change them all forever. For our school? Second floor for our school. And here we go. Good luck, kids. Is there anywhere you want to go? Just, let's just start at one end and move to the next. I think the li isn't the library across the hall? What was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. That's someone here behind me. Can you make a banging noise for us again? To let us know you're here? Keep going a little bit farther in front of you. Watch out. Move your hand around a little bit more. Right there. There's a cabinet. If you push it to the left, it closes. Okay. I'm gonna leave this door here. This is so hard not to be see. <laughs> if you could, just kind of push the door a little bit and slam it, just like that. What was that? Can you make that noise again for us? I think that, is the door open right now? The cabinet door? Yeah, it's open quite a bit. Okay. I think that swings on its own a little bit. So yeah, it's probably like has pretty loose hinges. Yeah. Is that you? Ow. That was my shoulder. Okay. Well, let's, I'll, I'll do it myself too. Um, let's try and keep our voices down a little bit because it's really echoing and we can't tell if it's you or not. 10 4. Okay, so I just saw really. Nice beam of light. I'm not a big orb person. Are you serious? But I mean, it went like in front of the door. It went from like up here and then stopped right by the other door. Oh my gosh. And like it was bright. So double check that when we're watching this. Is Are you hearing that call? Yeah. Hey, I'm hungry. Go buy me a sandwich. Yeah, we're hungry. You gotta feed us. We're fellow students. We're upperclassmen. We want some food. Dumb cooks. The food you make's terrible. Make something good. Either you make us something good or you make us leave.
Hey, stop wandering around the hallways. It's time for class. What? What was that? Okay, basically what just happened. There was a huge flash of light coming from the door, right? Like, huge, like... Like I said... Shh. Is there someone in here with us right now? Okay, 10-4. That, that light was not down. The light that went in front of the door, it was like blue. It and it got like, huge. It was huge. Like, it literally went like from here all the way across, like, almost like it was going that way, and like, I don't know. Like, it got, like, like, picture this as a ball of light. It went really big, and then yeah. just shrunk, and it was in direct response. Like, I said, hey, you need to come, stop wandering around in the hallways, it's time for class, and all of a sudden this light just went. Whoa. Just went. Just went. Just went. Seriously, there's some serious walking going around in these hallways right now. Is that them upstairs walking? I don't know. Hey Seth, Johnny, are you guys walking around upstairs? <coughs> no, sir, we've been stationary for the last like two minutes. Just, <clears throat> just start slowly walking down that way and I'll start taping you. And just stay quiet. Who's in here with us? Come on, I saw you. I'm behind the chair. Behind the oh chair. my gosh! What? I just what? seen some a face go right freaking by my face. <laughs> against the wall, dude. A face by the face? Holy really? cow. Did you get on camera? No. It was right there, and then I turned. It was right there. What do you mean, like, oh, like, outside? Yeah, like, freaking looking at me right there. I've never seen anything like that before. But was it transparent? Was it... It was explained? white. It was like a white face yeah. just looking at me. Really? With big eyes. I mean, I could make out facial... I mean, his... I mean, his... I mean, facial features. Right, right like this, like, boom. Right Dude, what's that like? Yeah, like, just staring at me, staring through me. I just see another light. Someone just walked behind me. Come out. If you come out and show yourself, I won't give you detention or I won't tell you to go to the principal's office, so come out and show yourself.
You guys better be paying attention in class. Otherwise, I'm going to give all of you attention. You understand me? There's no horse around here. They have to throw our school. Ooh, I just got really cold. Ooh, I am freezing right here. I'm experiencing a very, very cold chill right here. Let's see if you feel anything. You feel that? Oh my god. Obviously, you got me because you're shining on me and it's going to be a hotel. Can you turn it off for us? Did you hear that? Yes. Hey, who's in the bathroom? Jesse set up the flashlight so that if he barely hit it, it'll turn on. He came back over here and something went over and turned it on. Okay. Let's just keep an eye on that. <clears throat> yeah. Whew, I got goosebumps. Seriously. So if uh, the flash... There's serious energy right here. I know. Here. I feel it right here. Like, oh, man. I got goosebumps. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, so man. if the flashlight goes on, that's what that is. Who's here with us right now? Oh my god, two times. Uh, did anyone make a coughing <gasps> or throw up noise? No. No. Nice. Oh my god. We are getting, um, Megan's flashlight is being turned on and off. Or turned on. I go and set it and tell them to turn it on and they, they turn it on. It's fluctuating. Oh. Turn you the light off. That? Will you turn the light off for us? Turn it all the way off for us. Can you turn it back on? Thank you so much. Sorry, Cole. I didn't hear pretty much anything that you said because we're getting some major activity right now. Can you turn it back on for us? Thank you so much. Use our energy. Use Yes. Pull all the energy from us. Oh my goodness. Come on, can you make it stronger? Stronger. It Turn stronger. it harder. Take my energy. Take my energy. Make it stronger. Are you getting this? Yes. Come on. Make it stronger. Stronger. Make it as bright as you can. Take my energy. Use it. Stronger. You can make, I know you can make it stronger. Make it stronger and keep it steady. Come on. I know you can. Oh, oh my, oh my god. Are you serious? Now, can you turn it off for us? Turn off the flashlight. Use our energy. Come on. Turn the flashlight off. Turn it off. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Come on. All the way. There's noise in this room just now. Turn it all the way off. Come on. All the way off. You can do it. I know you can. Take my energy and use it. Use it. All the way off. Yes! Oh yes! my god, you oh my god, you've gotta be kidding me. Oh thank you. Then I want you to turn it back on full power. Use my energy. Just turn it on all the way, just right at once. Two, three, four, five. <gasps> oh, oh 
my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I've got major chills right now. Major, major chills. You got all that? Yes. Johnny and I, oh my. Okay, there's no words. I just bawled upstairs. Are you serious? I just completely bawled upstairs on camera. You got, he said something. Let's, let's go in here. Let's go in here. Yeah. Let's talk over a little bit. We're going to head back up there real soon. We instantly started feeling like the principal or something up there. We were in his office, and then we went in the dressing room, and I could hear, we could hear footsteps when we were talking about it. And then I heard somebody come into the principal's office. You were in the principal's and office? And we were in the dressing room behind the door. Okay, all right. We heard somebody come in, and we were just hearing knocks and stuff. So something started leading us by noises down to the end hall. That starts the other one. That right when I got into this place, I, mean, I got this vibe of not being a or nothing. Any of that. Yeah. Yeah. But I just got this vibe about the principal. <laughs> and then as she's leading us through, she's talking about the dressing room behind his office and the, the shower stall, you know, yeah. and joking about the perverted minister, or perverted uh, principal. principal guy. So we're up there, and that's like, dude, I'm just going to throw this out because. When we were down in the home ec room, I just got like a mental flash, like a feeling of a little girl was like raped by the principal. And as soon as I told him that, it just... It just, dude, I seriously got this chill that hit my back and I instantly went like this. And I was like, holy crap, I've never felt this before. I'm freaking out. And also my All hands were super, oh yeah, super hot. And I dropped to my knees and started bawling. I'm starting to just feeling it again. Like seriously, like it was, insane. and I could not stop crying. And then all of a sudden, I just like took a deep breath and I just sat back, and it all just lifted off me. Wow. And then we started going through the door, yeah, the other door, and you guys were talking on the radio, and I hear yes, right. like because I'm listening through the speaker. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, did you, did you just hear a whisper? And he's like, no, they were talking. I thought this is right over top, right then. Yeah. And then I heard pacing. Camera done. And then this just battery. Are Seventy-one minutes was no. Oh my! It just goodness. shut off. Completely went black. Unfortunately, the video footage of Johnny and Seth's experiences were lost because of a malfunctioning camera. Audio footage is all that exists. That footage will now be presented. Oh! Oh, jeez. Do you not like us where we're at? Do you not like us being up here? Just when you, oh my gosh. Oh. You're right. Holy crap. 
prayer, dude. Seriously, like, right when you said it, it went right up my bag and right to my head, and my head just was, like, super hot and pressured, and I just couldn't stop, like, crying. It's freaking A, dude. Like, earlier, standing right here, I about started crying. Holy mother freaking I am... I'm so glad we got that. Seriously, dude, I never cried. <laughs> oh. Down here at the end? Yeah. Whew, I just got really lightheaded. When I'm up here, I feel like I'm feeling like something bad is gonna happen to me. Like I'm in trouble. Mm hmm And somebody knows. I something. am super hot too. Are you serious? What? Battery's blinking. What? I just had 47 minutes. Are you kidding? Dude, does it suck Oof, in a <gasps> oh, oh my god! Oh my god, there's someone behind me! Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. I'm not kidding you. I saw a fucking man's face. Oh my god. I'm sorry. We're still recording. I'm really sorry, but... Oh my god. No wonder I feel like crap. Dude, I gotta turn the light on. I'm not fucking kidding. I'm so sorry, but I'm a few minutes ago before the battery started going dead. Get the I, I Take it. Right. We're fine. No. I just full, full, solid, honest to God man, right behind Jesse. Swear to God. I swear to God, I saw his face, I saw his hair, I saw his sideburns, everything. I'm shaking right now. Look at me. Have, have him come up here, please. Will you guys come up here? And hurry. You want to hurry. Yeah, hurry. Dude, I swear to fucking God. You're gonna have to bleep the hell out of this, but... Dude, right before the battery started working, I saw a shadow right behind you, and after... After the battery started blinking, I saw that man. Oh my god. I am 100% sure I just saw the principal. I swear to god. Look at me. Yeah. Just here, right? I'm not kidding you. Clear, like, clear as you and me. Like, I think he was about this much taller than Jesse. You okay? All right, guys, what happened? Like, oh, I'm sorry, I believe the light on. So we're standing here, and we have, what, 40-some minutes of battery left? And I was kind of peeking behind Jesse because I thought I saw a dark shadow behind him. And the battery starts blinking, and I'm thinking, okay, something's sucking something up here. Two seconds later, I see a full man, I mean, solid as you and I. I saw his hair, I saw him. he had light brown hair, 
He was about this much. I'm shaking to death. He was about this much taller than Jesse. Jesse, you alright? Jesse is going. Are you okay? You alright? Dude, explain what's happening. What's the matter? You okay? Are you hurting? Oh my my hands. You oh. are burning up, Lord. Please protect him right now. My hands, they hurt, dude. What? Oh. what? Like they're vibrating and. Lord, release something. I feel something. like I'm like my arms are on a vibe or a massage chair or something. Hey. Take your pressure off of Jesse right now. Do me a favor, stand up. Can you stand up? Just don't focus on it. You okay? Hey, if it's bothering you, come here. Don't focus on it. Don't focus on it. Don't focus on it. Don't focus on it. Hey, don't focus. Take a deep breath. Don't focus. Do not focus on it. Come on. Come on, don't Jesse. focus on it. Sounds like Megan was in tears, doesn't it? It sounds like she was quite worried, that's for sure. Yeah. Do you know anything about what's going on upstairs? If you don't have a clue about what's going on upstairs, light the flashlight up. Go ahead and just turn it on. Make it bright. Are you behind what's going on upstairs? If you did what's upstairs, turn that flashlight on. Holy crap. Dude, we gotta go. Damn, dude. Make sure. Okay, okay, we'll be right back. We'll be right back to talk to you. Yeah, we're going. I just, I need to, you guys stay here with her? Yeah. I just got, some, just something appeared behind me, took all my energy. Oh, dude, and yeah. I collapsed to the ground. I couldn't talk. Something's grabbed my neck. Look at my neck. It's, my hands are holy cow, that's red. And dude, I can't feel my hands. Oh, and I can't either. Over here. And juicy thing over here. And she's oh, yeah, freaking dude, out, dude. A little bit. And I need to get back upstairs. Go look up, look up. She saw the guys. I saw her. She saw a guy standing right behind me. I swear to fucking God, I saw him. Just, we gotta stay out with him. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know. Can I have your flashlight? Yeah. Oh my God. No. I've never felt like this. You don't know how it. Are you recording? Yeah, you don't know. Okay, I will. Yeah, explain to us. I'll explain to you guys what happened. Okay, so we had just. I mean, the battery drained on our IR, so we went down to get the other camera, and we had just gotten up there. We had a 47 minutes of battery, and oh, my hands are still going numb. And uh, we had just gotten up there, got the flashlights off and everything, and Jesse's just sitting there filming, and I'm kind of peeking behind him because I saw a dark figure behind him. Two seconds later, the battery just goes boom, dead. I saw... I saw the principal. I saw his face. He was probably, I don't know how tall Jesse is, but he was probably 6'1", 6 6'2". 6 um, light brown hair, light brown sideburns here, and I just saw him glaring like this at Jesse, like just giving him a death stare. And I just jumped and leaned into Jesse, and immediately he collapsed to the ground. And he was hot. He was drenched. His, I mean, you saw his neck. Some There's something in there. And then we got... Oh, we got Seth and Johnny up there and they were explaining it and something hit me and I was telling it to take it off of Jesse and something hit me. My hands started to go numb like Jesse said his were and I just burst into tears and I started sobbing and I said, I got to get out of here now and I came out here and I'm feeling a little bit better now, but wow. about, that was, about dead. Cool. Okay. I've never felt anything that intense in my entire life Definitely. ever. Ever. And I, I mean, this, he was solid as you and me. His, I could see his flesh color. Like, I swear to God, he was just like I'm sitting here with you right yeah. now. He looked just like you and I. He like wasn't you could reach misty. Out and he touch was him. completely solid. I think he drained all the battery from that camera to manifest himself. What camera was it? The big, the big camera. The big one? Yeah. There was like an hour of battery. Yeah, there was 47 left on there. minutes. Yeah. 47 minutes. Holy cow. Dude. 
dude. So we couldn't get it on camera? No, and we didn't <sighs> get it. Did their cameras right? Uh, yeah. Well, they didn't come up there until after it happened, and okay. Jesse was holding the camera, so he didn't get them yeah. in, but I saw him. Yeah, we definitely need to all go up there on I the third him. floor and taunt like no other. Yeah. I'm just, I'm really stirred up right now. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's crazy. I mean, I'm still like, <sighs> look at me. <laughs> and my hands are still numb. It's going away a little bit, but oh my God. I did not expect there to be something like this here. This building is... There's a dark secret here, and I don't know what it is. Did you but say it's just pure evil? Yeah. Wow. I don't even know. Here, go ahead and turn on the flashlight. And on three. When we say it, turn on the flashlight if you're with us. One. Two, three. Leading up to this, Jesse began to feel as though he was a puppet to the principal. Every time the principal would talk, Jesse would repeat it on command. Jesse even took on his mannerisms like the big smile on his face and his cocky attitude. But I know God is right here with me and he's just going to bring me back up. Kind of like now. Yeah, you're right. I got nothing I got. I'll humble myself down enough to that. So really, you have nothing on us. Yeah, you got nothing. Can you get a shot? I can't stop smiling. I can't. This is creepy. I can't, like... Can you see, like... Yeah. I, like... It looks forced. I can't. And I have control, but like, I just, I'm getting things in my head. So. I just saw someone. Yeah, I think you're seeing I just stop smiling. So you were just like hearing, you were just kind of repeating what you were could, hearing in your head? Like this is what I was thinking, or what I was saying. He's leaning back in a chair in his office. Huge smile, and I can hear everything he's saying. So it's coming out of my mouth. Oh man, I still want to smile. I'm feeling so. anger, just pure 
anger right now. Like you could tell that I I wasn't just smiling normally. No. Like did you see my my cheeks like twinging? And- he had like a Joker smile. Is what it reminded me of. Just kind of stuck there. I I could not change it, dude. No matter what I did, and it actually started off with just me laughing. Johnny was was uh, um, word please. Uh, provoking. Provoking. Thank you. Yeah. And I just started laughing. I just, I just got this big smile on my face and I started laughing. And I said, John, he thinks you're a retard. He, he says you have no idea what's coming later. What's coming later, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so around the uh, mm-hmm. LCD from the light. Um, I saw his face just... Whoa. What was that? It was a shadow coming up the stairs, wasn't it? It wasn't Johnny either. What was yeah, that? Right, oh, fine. It was a shadow coming up the stairs. <laughs> Dead serious. <laughs> Did you get it on camera? I had my camera <laughs> hopefully pointing that way, but there was a, there was a, a hunched over shadow coming up the stairs. Holy Dude, I've never seen Cole jump back before. No, dude, he was like, he was crouched down, and Johnny wasn't crouched down. I feel like I can't see. Shine a light up there. I swear I just saw a face up there again. That's where I seen the red light or the red glowing. We saw red eyes too. Dude, yeah, I saw I red eyes like right here. Spend very yeah, much time. Here. We've been, yeah. Johnny was in there. Yeah, I was. Okay. The team later joined together to do a ghost box session on the third floor. Give us your name. What's your name, Rick? Tell us. Wes? Is your name Wes? Wes, what's your what's your full name? Wes, tell us your last name. That sounded weird. What? I heard a voice come through. It could have been a freaking high school chick. For yeah, all we it could know. have been close to my age. Did you, did you rate from a last a student in this room? I think she might have resisted more than a younger boy. Yeah. Rape, did you hear that? Yes. What? I just heard rape. I did too. Did you just say rape? Did you rape a girl? Two girls. Oh Oh my god, you guys. Did you hear that, dude? You raped two women in this room? It was the same voice, too, that said rape. I can't. Principal of this building. Wes, were you the principal of this school?
stop shaking. Did you say probably? Prove to me that you're in charge. Did he just call me Fatso? Dude, seriously, I'm that's dead. What it, that's what it sounded like, dude. Like really? Maybe stencil, but that's with the beginning of an S, though. Oh, it sounded like fatso to me. Who's a whore? Sound like all of us. I think I just heard Megan. Did you just say that Megan is a whore? you get the feeling that you need to get out of here, uh, you, um, you you need to tell us. I, I, I can't explain it. Can what is it about Megan? What? Why do you keep saying her name? You want to say to me? You said you have a problem with me earlier. Tell me what your problem is. Never shut up. That's what I heard. That's what I heard too. Just shut up. Do you just tell me to shut up? Got a nice orb. Did you hear that? You just said green light. Huh. Can you make that green light turn red for us? Touch it. It'll turn red. After this investigation, CCPI discovered through an undisclosed source that there had been girls sexually assaulted in the school by a school employee. This shocked the team since they had proven this through paranormal activity. The Farrar School proved to be the most active place CCPI had ever investigated. They experienced things they'd never had before. And in the midst of all of this, they discovered a dark secret that lurks in the halls of that school. <gasps> oh, oh my god! Oh my god, there's someone behind me! Holy shit! After weeks of planning, CCPI had finally arrived at their last stop on their journey. what lied ahead for the team at this infamous location.
In the small town of Aliska, Iowa, sits a small, innocent-looking white house. This house isn't some scary-looking brick schoolhouse or an old manor, but it is one of the most haunted, if not the most haunted, places in America. The Velisca Axe Murder House, or also known as the J.B. Moore House, is home to one of the most brutal, unsolved mysteries in the history of America. In the early morning hours of June 10th, 1912, a family of six and two overnight guests were hacked to death with an axe. The murderer walked out of the house that morning and was never captured. Although the murderer was never found, many believe he is now stuck in the house along with his victims over 99 years later. The history of the house and the murders is so detailed that the best person to go for the information is CCPI's good friend and colleague, Johnny Hauser. Basically, the night of June 9th, 1912, the town put on sort of a church program, which was an end of Sunday school event. Uh, directly afterwards, around 10 p.m., the Moors walked home with Ida and Lena Stillinger, who just happened to stay the night with them that night. Uh, the next morning, Mary Peckham, the next door neighbor, noticed that nobody's up doing any chores. She looked at the windows, all the shades were pulled, tried knocking at the door, couldn't get an answer, and that's when she got a relative down. Uh, she got Ross Moore, who was JV's brother, he used his skeleton key on this door and then kind of lit a match and walked directly into this bedroom. And when he walked into this room and found these two bodies, he had no idea who these two little girls were. Basically, he saw two unknown people in this bed. Um, Lena kind of had, was posed provocatively a little bit. Uh, her legs were spread. She had a blood stain here. Uh, and her underwear was actually found under the bed and he had actually wiped the blade of the axe off with it. They know this because the axe was left up against the door frame and it had corresponding lint. Uh, of course, the mirrors in the house were covered. All the oil lamps were placed at the edge of the beds with the tops removed. Uh, at this point, he ran out to Mary Peckham instantly and said, you need to get the cops here, something horrible's happened. They got Hank Court and the town constable, the three physicians, and the minister to the family, and they went upstairs and found six more bodies. This is the bed where the parents were found. JB was on this side, Sarah was on the inside. Again, with the mirrors covered, the oil lamps placed at the edge of the beds with the tops removed. Uh, what's kind of interesting in this room is JB was on the outside. He was laying down, had his arm kind of dangling off the bed like this, and blood had pulled up in his hand and ran into Sarah's shoes. <coughs> With her shoes, one was tipped over. So they kind of thought that he did one or two blows, came back over, and hit him again, and in the process knocked a shoe over. At the edge of the steps here was a big pool of blood where he basically stood and just kind of basked in what he did and the blood ran off the axe. This is the kids room where Herman, Paul, Boyd, and Catherine were all found. Now this is by far was the worst room to come to because the axe marks were so bad in the ceiling, the ceiling was almost destroyed. At one point, one of the detectives said it looked like he just took the axe and went like this in a, a celebrating manner. And one of the beds, he would have had Herman and uh, Boyd, Catherine in the other, and then Paul, the youngest, in the crib. This is uh, most likely where the killer hid. They found some cigarette butts on the floor, a general mess. So the main thought is that he probably sat in here for about a couple hours just plotting and thinking of what he was going to do. And most likely from here went out and got the parents first and then the kids second. been about seven or eight scratchings that's happened all in threes the mocking the trinity scratch 
There was a woman that was physically pushed down in the attic, held down. Uh, she had the bruises on her arms. There's been people pushed down the stairs. A lot of physical attacks have been going on in this house. As well as mental, it'll like to play with your thoughts, your moods. Your... Shadow figures, footsteps, giggles, doors slamming. The Velisca Axe Murder House is one of a kind. It is always changing and it seems to be getting darker. CCPI had previously investigated the house six times and on the seventh would end up being the craziest of them all. Me and Johnny are going upstairs to the second floor. Jesse, Megan, and DJ will come in a little bit later. That's got that sick stomach feeling. Oh, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Oh boy, alright. I'm gonna light my way up the stairs here. Grab his ankles from under the bed. I know you like to do that. Yeah, grab my ankles and pull me under the bed. Or maybe I can't do it, so I'll just get under the bed. Here I am, completely trapped. Now what? Is this what you want? Half under the bed if you did something right now. Oh jeez, what's up man? <laughs> Something grab you? Yeah. <gasps> touching like my leg. Oh man. Johnny just crawled under the bed and got grabbed. Holy crap. It was like a... Oh my lord. Oh dude. I had the camera right on you too. Closet curtain. Well, this like I know it's like an energy. Yeah, it's weird. Step inside the closet. May have to duck down. I think. You can turn the light on too if you need to see. No problem with that. Molested or raped in this room?
whoever was sexually molested, can you please talk to me about it? Here's what we're gonna do. You guys, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Are you guys scared of the train when it comes through? Gives me the creeps. Catherine Hyde. Get up. Herman, Seth is going to get you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm really creeped out. Uh, let me see Catherine. I, but I thought I'd just recreate, like, maybe. Yeah, I know. That's awesome. About filled Z drawers. <laughs> Catherine. What was that noise? Help us. Somebody's in the house. Herman, quick, get in the closet. down like a little wussy we can't see you you got the upper hand yeah and we're basically telling you come on free shot you can take all of our energy and use it to kick our butts yep that's what I want you can grab the energy oh fuck <gasps> someone oh. just slammed that door shut oh <laughs> Dude, go over there and check it out. Hey guys, uh, you ready? <laughs> Woo! Some seriously, some had to like stomp on that door. Oh fuck! Yeah. Did it do it again? Uh. uh let's meet outside. All right, dude, we're coming out. <laughs> oh! That's, uh, Awesome. Dude, what the frick, man? Woo! Thank you. You just issued the challenge. And we're accepting. Yeah. What did it feel like? What kind of things ran through your mind when you're laying here? And you hear, bang, 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 bang. And you just hear slow footsteps walking across the floor. You hear them walking down the steps. Doom, doom, doom. 
doom. And you hear this metallic dragging coming along with the do going <laughs> what possibly could it be why did you hear a scream from upstairs something's got to be wrong you're laying here and you see a man Staying in your doorway. Maybe the light from outside catches a glimpse of something in his hand. Do you wake your sister? Do you go, Lena? Or Ida? There's somebody in the door. He's a bad man. You try to fight it, but boom! Kills your sister. I was dead. Her blood is on your face. He raises the axe again. All you can do, all you can do is try to stick your arm up and stop him. You stick your arm up, and he hits you. And he drops you, and BAM! You're done. You're done. You'll no longer live on that earth. You will no longer know what it's like to see daylight. Am I scaring you? Am I giving you bad memories? I started going backwards to pitch dark. Then I come back from this back wall. What is that? Is that rain? That's what I heard earlier, I think it is. Yeah, it might be coming through that crack. Is that you at the cellar door? Kick it! Do something! Why is my night vision so... It just seems so dark when I look over there. Um, I would show you guys exactly what I'm seeing right now and turn off the infrared, but not entirely sure how to work it. Hey, What's that? You're about 10 minutes in. Yep. I mean, 10-4. Is there somebody down here with me? Did you kill anybody in this house? Door open again. Door open again. Throughout the night, we were able to catch the door opening twice more. The door was securely latched each time it was opened. Tell us your name. Is there anyone in this house, any of us, that just pisses you off? Maybe. Oh. Is that what you guys heard? Yeah. Who? Who is it? Is 
Is there another time we should be in the house tonight? Or up and down. Up and down. Like if I was moving, going like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just started. Was one of the kids just jumping on the bed? It's going again. It's going again, big time. Really? There's something under this bed. Holy crap, dude! my hand. You guys are sitting there, you weren't really moving at all. You got my hand. Johnny, the way you're standing right there, it looks so creepy with the silhouette of you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I want to make you do it. I, I Attic all day. You make my bed bounce Smoke again? Cigarette. Huh? What is your to make my bed bounce again. Andy Sawyer was one of the bigger suspects in the murder case. Sawyer was said to be a strange man, especially after the murders. He was very skilled with an axe and kept one with him at all times, even when he was in bed. Jesse's Jesse. I have goosebumps. Yeah, all I got over, major man. chills, man. Like him. Like him. Like him. Like him. Like seriously, big time. <laughs> What are you feeling, Jesse? Let's let's hear it. Major chills, dude. Chills. Oh. I'm challenging you to show yourself because I don't think you can. Man. What is your name? You tell me how many times I knock. How many times is that? Just 
I think it was, it sounded like from the door. Dude, it was inside the closet. Yeah. Someone just knocked on the inside of the closet. Again. He did two times. Yoo-hoo! Do it again. Again. Yeah. Again. Oh my gosh. Let's do it again. Alright, let's do it one more time. Can you knock a little louder for us? Alright. Oh, Lena, if you're scared of us, knock twice. If you're not, knock once. There. Lena, can you knock three consecutive times for us? One, two, three. What's up, guys? <gasps> Door just freaking open. Door open and closed. Did it? Door open and closed. That's why I freaking jumped back. It's on the wall. Yeah. yeah. It was. It wasn't this. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. What was that? Right, was that there, you? There, there was, was no wind there. No, dude. there was ice cold air that came out of that. So if it wasn't, dude, I don't. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm afraid Le to move my hands. Oh. Le Lena, is that you playing tricks on us? You having fun? It's open. Dude, it blew open that time, or it came open that time. It was bigger than any of the others, and there was no wind. No. Dude, and that was like ice cold air rut. Oh my. Lena, you having fun with us? You opening up that door? Can you giggle for us? What? I saw a shadow move. No meter just went up what? to you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Good. No Thank wind. You. All right, no, no can, wind. Can you, no wind. Do, can you agree? Did someone that no. was that was not wind? Yeah. Close it. Go ahead. Close it. Yeah. Thank oh you. Oh my gosh. Thank you Yay. so much. Dude, I've got chills running up Tell, and down. Yeah, yeah keep getting this. Yeah, this is awesome. Can you do it again? Take it from your point of view. Take it from your point of view. Sorry, dude. The freaking claws to get me. Can you do it again? Dude, I saw a shadow walk across that door. I see. That's what made me jump the second time. <laughs> Yeah, right as you said that, the mount meter went up. Really? Yeah. Open it again. Open it farther. You're doing great. This is awesome. This went up. Use all your energy. Open it really far for us. Get that, get Johnny real quick. Just tell that Johnny. Oh. I just want something to make sure too. Are you serious? Yeah. Get, get Johnny's. What do you say? What's that? I love the dogs. I've, seen, I've been up here before where the wind's blowing so hard the windows are rattling mm -hmm. and the door didn't budge ever the whole night. Never? No. So would you would you say I don't think it's the wind. That it's it, it wouldn't be an environmental factor? I think you know when it just going off too. wind is really not coming through that strong. Barely comes through, but to open it up 
more than yeah. like two, three inches, that would take an enormous amount of wind gust and True. suck it. Come here, Lena. Cool. Come on. What? Come on. Get the camera real quick. Okay, no, 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 Dude, Come on. Can you open it? I can see. Come Someone on. Someone just hit my foot. I heard that. Someone just clicked. And I heard that. Yoo-hoo. What that was was something flicked my foot, dude. I like heard it. Nice. Yeah, it's like a I got really good close up of it. Lena, can you come in, please? Can I come in? Oh, oh my that's gosh. your invitation, Johnny. Oh boy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Is it cold in there, dude? No, it's not. Wow. It's colder out there. Okay, there's no wind. Was that just you? No, I'm just standing here. Was that you that just slammed it? No. No, that opened again. Oh. By itself. <laughs> well, that was me. me. Bumped it. Dude, there's no breeze in here at all. Is there less breeze than right by the window? Yeah, it's like almost comfortable. I'm putting my hand up in the attic. There's no breeze. Boom. Proves it right there. Yep. Nope. And it's blowing pretty good out right now. You can do it. One, two, three, open. Push. Go. Demon stomach. Yay. Thank you. Hey. Are you trying to play with us? Yeah, dude, there's no breeze in here. Can you touch me? Whoa, I just got touched. Whoa. My hand that I had down. Yeah. Thanks, Lena. Thank you. Can you open the door for me? <gasps> Holy shit. shit. You cannot tell me that was wind. No. Oh, Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, that was Throughout the rest of the night, the closet door repeatedly opened. This was until about 4 o'clock a.m. when the door stopped and all other activity ceased. As discussed, the team was going to do the reenactment. Johnny would play the murderer with the supposed actual acts from the murders. Jesse and Megan would lie in JB and Sarah's room. Seth and DJ would lie in the kids' room. And Cole and Dan would lie in the blue room.
Before the reenactment, the team hadn't discussed screaming during the killings. So while it was happening, Cole began to think the reenactment had gone terribly wrong. Johnny ended the reenactment because he heard this being whispered in his ear. It must also be noted that during the first part of the reenactment, Johnny had a very large, evil grin on his face. He swears he didn't smile while doing this. with the smile being put into a trance and being told to do it. It's very obvious that something wanted this reenactment to be more real than planned. After the previous events, Johnny felt very shaken up and felt that he should leave the investigation for the rest of the night. Yeah. 
dying to kill people? Is that what you want? You're a sick freak, you know that? You can't do it yourself? Did it once, you can't do it again? You have to do it through someone else? You just listened to the reenactment of what you did. And you're telling someone, do it again. What does that say about yourself? Seeing a grown man just run out of this room because he was so scared. What do you think those two little girls were thinking? They had to be terrified. Because I guarantee you, after hearing those thuds, they were not sleeping. No. They were frozen in fear. They were frozen in fear. You came along. After you smacked an axe several times, do you think you're better than killing little kids, scaring people, moving little piddly things, thinking it's going to make the next momentous haunted location DVD? It's not, buddy. Because it doesn't matter. Everything you do, it doesn't matter. You. 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 You realize what we spent most of our time doing tonight? Standing in front of a closet door. Sit. 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 Talking to a little girl because she kept opening the closet door. It's more than you would. That is amazing. That's more than I've ever seen you do. Amazing. Only other thing I've seen you do is get chased by us through the house. Yep. Running away. Running yeah. like a little pansy girl. With your tail tucked between your legs. Where are you hiding? Hmm? You in here? Whoa. Oh, crap. It's just the lens cap. Freak me out. Where are you? Alright, if you're going to do something, now's the time. Ooh, I just got a really sick feeling in my stomach. Like, ooh, big knot. Come on. Scratch me again. Did you what? hear that? Yeah. That was not me. Okay. Holy crap. Dude. I'm gonna take the I'm shaking so bad I can't even hold it. That was freaky. <gasps> Jesus! Oh. Oh. Stop! 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 Where's Lena at? She ran to the bar. What's up? Two times. Hey! Oh man. That's the camera going. Do something to me! You right, bud? You're okay, bud. <clears throat> Is Megan okay? She ran to the bar. Alright. You're fine, fine, dude. It's just. Oh, you guys didn't say anything, right? No. No. Twice. Hey! Megan took off. I backed up. Again. Hey! That's what Gert hurt too. When he came hold on, here. hold on, hold on that real quick. I just had to say something. Folks, I just had to say something. That stuff that you see tonight, us freaking out, us running off. Some might say, well, that's not what ghost hunters do. Bull. 
That's not what Ghost Adventures use. So like Baloney. You get freaked out. Nobody knows the brink of their fear. Nobody. And this is real. The people who have not are watching this and have not been in this house, you have no idea what it's like. No idea. Some people come in here and say this is bull crap. It's because their mind isn't open to it. I'm sorry. That's that's that. And some people will never come in this house, and that's good. That's fine. But I'm telling you, there's something about this house. There is things this house and people and everything in this house. I swear this house is alive. House it knows. It freaks you out. And it's smart about it. You never know what to expect from this house. We have been here. This is our seventh night here investigating over a four-year period. And we've never had a crazy night like this before. After review, this was discovered. The team figured out that this was happening while Jesse was telling the killer to come out of his hiding place in the attic. The Velisca Axe Murder House yet again proved why it's one of the most haunted places in America. Voices Footsteps. Doors opening. And a possible possession. Kept CCPI on edge all night. The final step on their journey proved to be the most downright scary. In just over eight months, Calhoun County paranormal investigators experienced more paranormal activity than they could have ever dreamed of. In setting out to find Iowa's haunted hotspots, they did just that, and in turn were shocked to their core. Pushed to the brink of fear. And changed forever. Some of these experiences would send some packing and calling it quits. But for CCPI, it just left them thirsty for more.